you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. This morning, as my hands are lifted, let grace be available to me. Say, Lord, whatever it takes for me to experience your grace, your fellowship, your presence in my life forever. This morning, as my heart is open to receive eternal life, let that grace touch my life in the name of Jesus. I refuse to go back the same way I came in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord, for answered prayer. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Now, get out of your chair. Walk to two people. Give them a high five and tell them, this morning, the Lord will bless your life. Look for people and just give them a high five. Tell them the Lord will bless your life. Look at somebody. Tell the person, Tell somebody, God has been good to you. Humble yourself and appreciate God. Hallelujah. We want to... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so humble yourself. We want to appreciate the mama of the house, the first lady. <laughs> Celebrate mommy, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated in heavenly places. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Are you happy to be in God's presence? Are you happy to be in God's presence? All right, so we want to continue. Today is communion. We want to continue from where we left off on Friday night. Some of you didn't show up, but it's good. For those of you who didn't show up because you had tangible reason not to be in church, God will help you. But those of you too that deliberately didn't show up, it's on your head. See, I hear. Because every opportunity you have to come into God's presence is an opportunity to be blessed. Is somebody following me at all? Yes. I, I always say that the way we make time for some useless things, it's amazing how we always find frivolous excuses when we have to come into God's presence. And you know that this is a special program that you have been told in advance. So I don't see how... You know sometimes people will be doing weddings. They send invitation cards in advance. Is that not it? Sometimes you receive it two weeks before time, three weeks before time. Why? So that you can plan to attend. That's how when we put programs like this together, we expect you to plan and attend. And I discovered on Friday that it was even a holiday. Some of you still didn't show up. So the excuse of I went to work, it won't, it won't you know, wash. Is somebody following me at all? Because you knew in advance, you knew in advance that you should be here. But some of you, and some of you too had the F1 tree, and temerity to be sending messages so that you are in town. As if I report to you. Coming to church has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with your appointment with divinity. Is somebody following me at all? So when you have the chance to come to church, and this was my life. So I'm not telling you because I'm your pastor. This is who I was. Nobody wishes him or herself into colossal success. There are sacrifices you make. And to think of the fact that it was even a holiday. Come on. You, you have to be in church. So you want to tell me you couldn't do all the things you had to do until evening when you had to report to church. What were you doing in the morning? What were you doing in the afternoon? Late afternoon? What were you doing? So if you truly wanted to come, you would have come. Look at the person next to you and say, you see, we are talking to you. Tell the person, you are the reason why he's using first 10 minutes to rebuke us. Tell the person, look at the person. Don't be afraid of anybody. Now ask the person, I didn't see you on Friday night. So where were you? <laughs> eh? Mrs. Duplan, you didn't tell me you were coming. I appreciate it, guys. It's been a while. We saw it. You are bad. <laughs> eh? This attitude of when your pastor travels, you to where did you go? When I travel, you travel. 
It's a bad practice. We, we got back Friday night, drove from the airport quick, and we came to preach. The hours we traveled, we still came. You, you are here eating kontomri and yam in your house and you are laughing. Instead of coming to sit down and hear God's word, it's bad. Many of you, when I travel, you don't show up in church. It's a bad practice. I'm not the one going to judge you on judgment day. So stop deceiving yourself. Look at somebody and say, stop deceiving yourself. You are full of too many excuses. Yet, there is no friend of yours that got married, do, did baby dedication, that you were absent. All of them, you were there. And you'll be asking them, you do where we are in I'm not happy with some of you. It's bad. It's bad. There are people sitting here since I traveled. It's been three weeks now. You have never appeared in church until today. Shame on you in capital letters. If I, this morning or evening, if I receive your prophecy, I will sit on it. Yes, I will sit on it. I will give you the prophecy. It's bad. And I've been saying this time and again. All the people that came to preach in my absence, they carry something. Is somebody following me at all? It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Maybe I should preach on it's bad. <laughs> I will just believe God to give me a message on it's bad. Because I've seen mommy's face, I forgive you. <laughs> now, turn your Bibles to um, Romans chapter 8. Let's continue from where we left off. Somebody shout, I will never be condemned. Please say it louder. I can never be condemned. Listen, if you say it well, condemnation will be far from your destiny. Say, I can never be condemned. Now, let's read it together. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in the world. Talk to me. To them which are in Christ who walk not after the patterns of the world. Who walk not after the systems of the world but after the systems of God. That is what it means by walking after the spirit. 2023, between now and December, may you be controlled by the systems of the spirit. May you be navigated by the systems of the spirit. Somebody shout, I receive navigation from above. How many of you sincerely, between now and 31st December, you want the Holy Spirit to dictate the pace? You want the Holy Spirit to embellish you with direction and illumination? If your hands is lifted, may that grace be low upon you. Somebody shout, I receive it by fire. The Bible said, in that day you shall hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And as you walk in that way, goodness and mercy shall follow you. This week, I prophesy with my eyes open. As the Holy Ghost guides you, as the Holy Ghost detects your pace, you will not miss out on your promotion this week. Anywhere promotion is looking for you, the Holy Ghost will lead you into that door. I speak over 72 people. In 72 hours, may you enter supernatural promotion. Somebody shout, I enter by fire. All, the Holy Ghost knows where your promotion is. So when you follow his dictates, when you follow his leadings, you can never miss out on your promotion. Listen, God told me that this month is our month of promotion. In fact, before Holy Ghost service, may you enter your promotion. May you enter promotion in your finances. May you enter promotion in your business. May you enter promotion in your family. May you enter promotion in your career. Rise up and shout, I am the one enjoy your promotion and I told you on Friday night that you can never be condemned unless you are what judged is that not it thank God every one of us here that is born again we can never be condemned somebody shout I can never be condemned why because I have eternal life see I have eternal life listen these things I'm telling you I'm not saying it so that you will be happy I'm not entertaining you so you will feel some good. No, I am telling you the raw truth. When you have eternal life, nothing can judge you. Yes, in the Old Testament, they were judged when they sin or transgress. By how many things? Three things. Number one is what? Hey. 
Hey. What were the three things that judged them in the Old Testament? Don't put it on the screen. What judged them in the Old Testament? Number two. Incurable sickness and diseases. Number three. What? Untimely death and eternal death. Guess what? All these enemies, eh? none of them is yours. I don't like your amen. I say because you have eternal life, anything called poverty is far from you. Anything called sickness and disease. Listen, what killed your mother, what killed your great-grandfather can never kill you. Why? Because you have eternal life. Rise up and shout, I can never be poor. I can never be sick. I can never die untimely. That's the truth. Even if in your family, everybody is poor. Poverty is ravishing on everybody in the family. In your case, you are minus. Say I hear. Please, one more time. Scream it if you have eternal life. I can never be poor. And in every family, you will see a pattern of some incurable diseases. And see high blood pressure, stroke, cancer. Ah, I prophesy on this altar. In your own family, even if there is a pattern of high blood pressure, I cut it off. I say I cut it off. If there is a pattern of diabetes, by eternal life, I cut it off from your life. Lift up your hands. And if people die untimely, do you know there are some families, they don't grow old. Hello? Do you know there are some families, nobody goes beyond 70 years. I'm telling you, nobody, the furthest you go is 40. The furthest you go is 50. Do you know when you are 50, you are not an old man, you are still a young man. Talk to me. Listen, I've seen 75 year old, 80 year old men walking as if they are 17. I'm telling you, look at you now, 32, almost 40, a little over 40. You bend down small, hey, you bend, something is wrong. Are you with me at all? Your strength must remain unabated. That was what Abraham enjoyed. That was what Moses enjoyed. Don't say that was Old Testament. They didn't even have the covenant we have. I stand on this exalted altar. Until you are tired, nothing will take you from this life. Until you are saying, my father, I am ready to come up. Nothing will take you untimely. Somebody shout it, I shall not die. Please say it, oh, I shall not die. So, all these things, you are exempted. Why? Because of eternal life. Oh, somebody shouted gladly, I have eternal life. Ask your neighbor, do you have eternal life? If you truly have eternal life, then nothing should judge you. Are you with me at all? Sit down. Nothing should judge you. Nothing. Nothing in this life should be able to judge Kingsley. You cannot judge me. Why? Because I left that realm where you could judge me. Where you, con you could conclude on my destiny. Now, if you conclude on my destiny, you do it at your own peril. Why? Because I've become a wind. And a wind blow where it listed. Thou heareth the sound. You cannot tell. So my destiny cannot be forecasted. My tomorrow cannot be predicted. Hello? There is no sorcerer. There is no witchcraft anywhere that can predict your tomorrow. I stand on this altar. 2023, you will surprise your enemies. Oh, I say you will surprise your enemies. Do you have enemies in your destiny? You will surprise the spirit of poverty. You will surprise the spirit of incurable diseases. You will surprise untimely death. Listen, what was meant to kill you, God will use it as bricks huh, for your next level. Receive that grace. Huh? Receive that power. Somebody shout, I am the one. So I cannot be judged. Why? Because I am following after the spirit. You cannot judge me. Listen to me. It's not about positioning. It's not about status. It's not about, I'm a man of God. No. I'm an archbishop. I'm a bishop. It doesn't matter. God is not bothered about your title. What God is interested in is knowing who you are. Is somebody following me at all? All this, I am the MD. I am a former this. I am head protocol. It doesn't scare the devil. What intimidates Satan is knowing who you are. Knowing the fact that you have eternal life. So, so you talk, look at somebody and say, you must know it. You must know who you are. 
that's what is important and that's what is of great concern to God. God wants to know if you truly know who you are. That's why Jesus said, is it John 13, 17? He said, happy are ye if you know these things. Ah, happy are ye if you know these things and you live them. It's important to know. Look at somebody and say, you must know. You must know. He said, if you know these things, the word happy are ye, the word happy in the original Greek language simply means blessed. Somebody shall blessed. Talk to me, say blessed. So, Blessed are you if you know these things. Somebody shout, I am blessed. Oh, eternal life didn't come to upset you. It came to bless your life. Say, I am blessed. In other words, you exude blessings. Anywhere you enter, if there is a problem, that problem finds an antidote. Why? Because you are walking blessing. Say, I carry blessing. So, happy are you if you know these things. Blessed are ye if you walk not after the systems of this world, but after the systems of heaven. Then you exude blessing in every facet of your life. Marriage, blessed. Business, blessed. Life, blessed. So there is all around blessing. Can I prophesy? 2023, before end of August, experience all around blessing. By reason of your knowledge of who you are, may you enter supernatural blessing. It's, listen, life is sweet when you are blessed. No, talk to me. You can afford anything. You can go anywhere. You can sleep anywhere. You can enter anywhere. <laughs> Hello? How many of you desire that this eternal life will bless your life? Lift your hands. As your hands are lifted, I stand on this exalted altar. Before end of August, you will testify of a blessing. I say you will testify of a blessing. You are blessed. You are blessed. That's why, listen, every day you wake up, you must be talking, I am blessed. You must say it every day. Why? Because you have eternal life. That's the truth. You are blessed. Say it every day. If you don't become a talking Christian, you become an oppressed Christian. Talk, you are blessed. And first, you are blessed. Say to yourself, I am blessed. Tell yourself, I am promoted this month. Tell yourself, my husband is promoted. Tell yourself, my wife is promoted. Already, I'm getting testimonies of people in this house who are transitioning, who are being promoted. I prophesy, if God has started working it out in other people's life, may God remember you this season. I say, may Jehovah remember you this season. Rise up and shout, I promote myself. Scream it on top of your voice. I promote myself. You see, when you have eternal life, you can predict your tomorrow. You can. You can. You can say what you want to say. In Luke 21, 15, he said, I have given you a mouth. My goodness. I have given you a mouth and wisdom. Do you know your mouth is a gift? Come on now. I say your mouth is a precarious artillery. It's a weapon. He said, I've given you a mouth coupled with supernatural prudence. Why? So that all your adversaries, he didn't say your adversary, all your what? Who are your adversaries? The spirit of poverty. The spirit of incurable sickness and disease. The spirit of untimely. I have given you a mouth. In other translation, find it. He says, I have given you my word. <laughs> what is the word? Eternal life. Once you have his word, oh, there is no enemy of your destiny that will be able to stand before you. They cannot resist you. Poverty can't resist me. Sickness can't resist me. Whenever I'm ready to exit, I am ready. But I will not be lying on hospital bed because of prostate cancer. Then all of you will kill. That is sorry, oh, God forbid. I will not come and see you on your hospital bed because of breast cancer. I will not come and see. They say you are dying. They have given you three weeks to live. God forbid. Why? Because you have a mouth coupled with wisdom from honest and adulterated way. And by that amalgamation, there is nothing your enemies can be able to push into your life. 2023, you will surprise the devil. I say you will surprise the household witches and wizards. Say I receive it. So, you must start talking. Start talking. Talk.
talk the word of God. Speak the word of God. Enforce what? That is eternal life, sir. Speak it. If you don't talk, you will be downtrodden as a Christian. If you don't talk, you will become weak and, and the truth of them. Why I want you to talk? Anytime you speak, you empower your spirit in the world, in the spirit world. Any Christian that is not talking, your words will not be effective in the spirit. So start talking. Look at somebody and say, my neighbor, start talking. Look at someone and say, my dear, start talking. Oh, start talking. Say what you want to see. Say what you want to see. You see what you want to say and you say what you want to see. Say right here. Talk. If you forget anything, eternal life eh, pushes you to talk. Talk. All this gisting and conversations with your friends that you know, doesn't pay bills. Doesn't put money in your pocket. You are wasting conversations. You are, I'm telling you, there's nobody that gossips and became rich by gossiping. Yeah. You can be rich. All these useless conversations. All, the one hour you have been talking nonsense. Somebody is using that one hour to make money. You leave your house from Medina. Then you go and visit somebody in La Paz. And all you are doing is talking about somebody. You can't prosper. You are wasting conversation. You are wasting your mouth. That's what you are doing. You don't know what it means to have eternal life. Eternal life, folks, are serious minded folks. Conversations must take us forward. Conversations must make me prayerful. Conversations must make my betting for righteousness heightened. So I don't have time to sit down one hour talking about somebody who doesn't even know we are talking about. It's my life. Nobody is arguing it's not your life. It's your life. Anytime you remind somebody it's your life, it means you have lost that life. Umbume. <laughs> Let's just say, you have lost it. How am I communicating? Talk your tomorrow. Talk your marriage. Con consenting, maybe I worry any my own. So we try con consent. I'm telling you, con consent. Into be man na yami person wadeni ma on pesa. Into you con consent, you share. Talk, talk, talk your tomorrow. Every day, Father, my husband, my husband. God gave you the husband from the first day you started praying that prayer. Check yourself. Complain. Sorry. We are And then you are lazy. You are lazy. Sister now open, open and open a cheek. And you are anointing. Unyare. Box and wound see. You are not serious. You are not serious. When you have eternal life, you are a serious person. Serious people attract serious people. Listen, you can never attract what you are not. So if you are somebody who is always gossiping, check your circle of friends. They are. <laughs> you are an adulterer. All your friends are adulterers. Show me one adulterer whose friends are not also into the same game. They are the same. They are, because if you are not in the same soup, you will not be comfortable in that soup. So by the time you become comfortable, check people who drink. They relate. And I'm a boy. <laughs> Somebody say eternal life. Now go to verse 2 quickly. Let me, let me go to verse 2. Go back, Romans 8, verse 2. Let's jump to verse 2. For the law, somebody say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has done what? Free from what? I know you have read this scripture in season times, but I tell you, many of you have not truly understood it. Hello? You know, it sounds very theological. For the law of the spirit of life. Now, I'd like you to know, the law here 
eh, speaks of power. Somebody shout power. Talk to me, say power. So for the law of the spirit, for the power of the Holy Ghost is life. Is what? Is life. So the Holy Ghost gives you not just spirit, but gives you what? The power of life. Now the Holy Spirit takes the same life Jesus had, the same power Jesus had, and he imparts it into you. Follow me. So the law of the spirit and life is the power of the spirit and life of Christ. And the Holy Ghost now imparts it into Pastor Kelly's life. So the same spirit and life that was working in Jesus' life is what is working in his life. Hello? Somebody shout the same life. Talk to me. Say the same life. Shout it the same power. That's what you have. Richie, the power of Christ, the life of Christ, the Holy Ghost has given me is what you have also. My own is not bigger than yours. Your own is not bigger than mine. Once you are under the auspices and the details of the Holy Ghost, you are allowing the systems where we are to control you. It imparts you with life and spirit. I'm going somewhere. Say, I have the life of Christ. Shout it, I have the power of Christ. Do you have the life of Christ? Do you have the power of Christ? Now, I have seen that a lot of Christians sometimes sin. Is that not it? Sometimes fall into iniquity. But Mr. Koff, I've also discovered that many of them, as much as they sin, they don't like what they are doing. Hello? You know, there are some people that you, when they are talking to you, you can tell the life they are living. They are not happy with that life. It's like they truly love God. They come to church. They say, when they hear programs like holiness, they are excited. Why? Because it gives them the opportunity to repent. It gives them the opportunity to restore their relationship with God. So, not every Christian that is sinning truly is happy to sin. Of course, there are some like that. They just enjoy to sin. Hello? And those kind of people, they have what we call seared conscience. They don't see why they should confess their sins. They don't see why they should repent. They are always justifying their actions. But there are some Christians that Every time they sing, they're like, Lord, why? Why can't I just get it right? Lord, I, I, I don't want to come to church feeling guilty. Like yesterday, you went to sleep with somebody. You are here this morning. You feel bad. Hmm. There's somebody like that. You feel bad. Even when I'm preaching now, you're like, oh, so he's going there again. Where should I go? You know, but the truth is you feel bad. You wish you didn't tell the lies. Some people struggle to forgive. You wish you were not like that. Some people struggle when it comes to anger. They can't manage their fury. It's not who they are. They don't like it. They are always confessing, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. But they always find themselves doing the same thing. You know why? Because of the law of sin that leads eventually to death. So there is a power that makes some people sin. Hello? There is a power that drives people into adultery. Because you are the one that took your wife to the altar. He said, I will love you forever. I will never cheat on you. Till death do us part. And yet you are cheating. You are cheating. The same style you are doing with your wife, you are doing with your girlfriend. And you are even telling that foolish girl, ah, you are better than my wife. So that you are empowering her to fool more. It's the same thing. It's called the power of the law of sin. Look at it. The law of sin that ultimately leads to what? Death. Listen, if you are in this church with all my teaching and preaching, you are still fornicating. You are still committing adultery. You are still doing all those things. I'm telling you, eventually you go die. Not dying in terms of physical death alone. No. Your business will crumble. You will be struggling. You never will make money. You will sweat. No favor. Doors are closing. Because what's one thing? 
But the truth of the matter is, when you receive that life and the power from Christ, you are not supposed to suffer. Even if you were passing through some, some suffering, it has an expiry date. It looks like your own. There is no expiry date. It's forever suffering. Why? Because of the law. That's why some people... Now, the Bible is saying, Christ has given you his life. Has given you his power. Now, this is why people can't stop sinning. Because they don't have the life and the power of Christ. Think about it. If you truly receive the life and the power of Christ, your appetite for sin will be dead. No, I'm telling you. When you enter a place and you smell the odor of cigarette, you are angry. Meanwhile, you were like that. But there is a power in you that despises the odor of cigarette. You are not comfortable with alcohol. So any of you that is still watching blue film, you still watch porno, and your eyes are coming out. You have all these toys and gadgets. When you are watching, Peter I don't know what do TC for. Look at me. When I was saying you'll be promoted, you were all receiving. When we enter here, who do TC for? Who do TC for? Grandma and I, obvious. To eliminate three. That's the truth. If you, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm regenerated. I have the life of Christ. I have the power of Christ. It will be difficult to carry a woman into a hotel room. It will be difficult. So anybody that sins and you are living a life of iniquity is because you don't have the life and the power of Christ. Because the day you embrace it, you are free from the power of sin and death. So until you embrace that's why I'm preaching eternal life. So that for, for, from today, you will decide that I have received life. I have received the same power that was working in Christ. That means every sin I was struggling with, the sin that easily beset me, I have what it takes to overcome it. Listen, you can live a life that is above sin. Say, I hear. Talk to me. Say, I can live a superior life. You can. It's possible. When you, what makes it possible is the life of Christ. The power of Christ. This is holiness now or never. You are supposed to receive power so that you can live in holiness. You can live in righteousness. If you tell your husband or you tell your wife, I am going here, you must truly be going there. Recently, I was, I was talking to a son of mine and he was telling me about, he's close to a friend of mine, a, a, a pastor friend of mine, how now the wife has hired an investigator to follow the husband and they caught the husband with different women he's a man of God <laughs> but he has a weakness he's not allowing the power of the spirit of Christ to operate in him he's a man of God what of you so anytime you say it's, it, it, I have this feeling it's not feeling you're under the control of the power of sin and death. You can't date somebody and not be sleeping with the person. So anytime you don't have the power of the spirit of Christ, you can fall to any temptation. But once you have that power, I'm telling you, you will hate sin. You will hate sin. You don't like to hang around people who are always into the world. Listen, and I told you on Friday, the world has gradually entered the church. <sighs> Sometimes, even the people you call role models, they are not Christians. Recently, I was in a church with mom, and they were playing a song by Cardi B and another gospel artist. I told mommy, you see that lady is gradually fading from the system. How do you go and do a song with Cardi B? The fact that, oh, mommy, no, I was saying, you know, the Lord is my devil, devil. Tasha Cobbs and Cardi B. There was a line Cardi B was saying. Oh, it's Mickey. Okay. Sorry, oh, Cardi B. <laughs> it's, it's Mickey Minash. She was saying something. It's Mickey Minash saved. What? You can't say it. You see your, your, your hypocrisy. Is she born again? So if Shatawale takes microphone, and he's singing gospel. Does it make him saved? And they are dancing to it. You think Paul will give his mic 
to Mickey Marsh to come and do something. We are gradually bringing the world. Look at how now we are dressing to look like them. You are a child of God, yet you want to look like Beyonce. Something is wrong. Some, that's why we can't break from the sin or the sin that leads to death. We can't break from that power. That's the truth. The world is gradually coming. And listen to me, it's going to get worse. And they, you know what they normally say? Don't judge anybody. Who is judging who? The Bible said there is no concord between light and darkness. Is that judgment? It's truth. There is no concord between light and darkness. Yes, we may be in the same office, but we are controlled by different systems. That's who we are. Did Aunt Kelly not do a lot of Christian songs? Did he not do Christian songs? But was he still not legoing children? We are saying, maybe instruments, you know. Beats in the MD. And when they push it on Samura. So you didn't get any of these powerful Christian songs. Must it take somebody who is not born again? That's why today we are happily encouraging unrepentant secular artists on our pulpit. You give them microphones, sing. One day a pastor invited me and put Castro on the bill. Then he told me before I got to the program. He said, man of God, I want to bow worship. And I'm so sorry, why your program? Man God. You can say, well, I didn't go. Castro the destroyer. <laughs> what are you talking about? Listen, there are some things we shouldn't condone. If you know the number of comedians that have told me they want to come and do comedy here. I said, my upper, I don't have a problem with comedy, but I can't promote comedy on my pulpit. You come and make what? I love comedy, but not do it in social centers. But not the house of God. The fact that somebody you respect is doing it doesn't make it right. Comedy. Church, comedy. Now yes, you buy who's all your comedy wall. Everything is changing. Everything is, and that's what the you see now. We do what the people like, what will grow the numbers, what will excite the people. That's what everybody is doing. That's why we can't get away from sin. And this kind of stuff, people don't want to hear it. They will say you are judging. We are not judging, we are telling you the truth. If you feel judged, then repent. Repent. Because some of the things we are doing now. Somebody sent me a video of a popular American musician dancing with their wife. And she was twerking. Should you do it publicly? Even if you want to twerk for your wife, can't you do it secretly? You should, you should see how she was doing it. For a moment, you won't think these are Christians. That's why you two, you are doing the same thing. Because you use them as your standard. Because this person did it. So me too, I can do it. There's something wrong. That's why we can't overcome sin. Because the true power and the life of Christ is not working in us. Listen, if the life of Christ was working in all of us, I'm telling you, there are some things you will not pray for. God will happily release it into your life. I speak over your life today. That as you are receiving the life of Christ and the power of Christ, may certain things not be prayed for again. By reason of your relationship with God, may God lift those things into your life. There was a time in Nigeria, companies, big banks, all your industries, they will go to um, Deeper Life Church, Kumayi, and they will be begging him to release his members to work with them. Because those guys were clean. Those guys were holy. Those guys, were, they won't lie in the office. They will not be big, big companies. They were glad to go and employ them. When I heard, I said, wow. You don't need to go for interview. If you are from deeper life, it's okay. 
Because we know you are honest. We know you don't go behind your wife, behind your, we you are clean. I said, Lord, can you give me a church like that? Where my sons and daughters will be very honest people. They will not compromise. They can mark their own script. If it was possible with deeper life, it's possible today. Hello? Why? Because they have the life, the power of life of Christ working in them. Listen, it's possible that you tell August to December, I will not commit deliberate sin again. You know that this one is deliberate. I will not do it again. Is there anybody like that? That you want to challenge yourself? Now to December, you see, some of you are not sure because with all that I'm teaching, you are saying, I can't be a that the is there anybody like that? You are saying between now and uh, no more alcohol, no more adultery, no more fornication. Is there anybody like that? Shout it, I am the one. It's possible. No, the truth of the matter is that if you really want to receive that power of life, if you really want to receive that spirit of Christ, you know, you know, you know. And if you are pretending to, you know. There are some things, Reggie. Christians shouldn't do. We do them because we have the power of death and sin operating in us. But if you truly have this one, wow. Listen, sometimes eh, forget I'm your pastor. Forget all oh, that is a seer. Forget all those things. I'm a Christian first. Hello. On the day of reckoning, it's not I'm a pastor. That's why I'll go to heaven. I'm a Christian. That's why I'll make heaven. Listen, there are some things I won't do. Because I believe I have the power to overcome them. And I don't do them. And not doing them doesn't make me little. Doesn't make me backward. Hello? I have never committed adultery. Has it changed anything about me? Does it make me poor? Does it make me backward? It doesn't change anything. I'm rather happy. When I take microphone, I can preach without condemnation. Are you with me at all? me that I've gone to eat somebody. No. No blocker is after me. I'm not paying bloggers. I'm not in, I don't have any problem with anybody. By God's grace, when I see temptation, I jump it. Hello? Because that law will always show you problem that is approaching. So there are some people, when they are coming, you cannot, this one is an agenda. Oh yes. Your anointing doesn't throw away your wisdom. So some people, you look at them, too, too. Because Hello? That's what I expect of you. Because their power can make you very discerning. That's what you need. This is only because we save the best for the last. No, think about it, Flavio. If you are living a life of consecration, are you not happy with yourself? No, those of you who are women, that six different men have seen your nakedness, how happy are you with yourself? Do show more. Do show more came out. How will you feel? Imagine you have entered a supermarket and Nikki is there. Pius is there. Coincidentally, Peter is also there. When you take this out, you see Nikki. You take the other hand, you see pious. And when they all see you, you say, hey. And say, and you understand the meaning of it. It's saying. <laughs> so by the time you leave the shopping center, you're like, hey. Abrabo ben kweni. No, be a friend, me say, ya. And you. And ye. Shobi en leka say, and ye. And ye. What do you mean, I me? It's not good. You see my son carrying the son and that's another son and that's the wife. Are they not happy? Do you know one silly mistake can render this family useless? Now look at They are happy together. So my son 
Anytime he's going now, she will be living in the consciousness of the family he has. You don't allow any Delilah to destroy the family. Because the wife loves him. That's why they have two children. If a woman doesn't love you, you think she will allow you to enter the reservoir? It's love. And she has confidence. Mommy has confidence in me. Anybody in this world can cheat, not Kinsley. That's the confidence she has. So that confidence, I cannot take it for granted. I have confidence that mommy will never cheat on me. Hello? That's the confidence I have. So when we repose such confidences in each other, do you know what is behind that confidence? It's the power of the spirit and life. The same thing. Don't forget, Jesus didn't walk about as a spiritual. He walked about as a human being like you and I. But there was something that was controlling him. That thing that controlled him is what is controlling us. That's the truth. Do you know when you sit in a car after service and you start the ignition, the car is moving. Sometimes, even the body of the car don't know what is actually moving the car. Are you with me at all? But you know there is an engine that is actually moving the car. The steer may not see the engine. The pedals may not see the engine. But all of them are connected to that engine. So it's that engine that drives the car. In your case, that engine is the spirit. is the power of life. And the spirit of Christ that is inside you. Listen, take it from me. It is possible to live a life without sin. Say it's possible. Say it to yourself. Kingsley, it is possible to... Now let me go up and look at everybody's face. Say it. Mention your full name from today. Kingsley George J. Ajewan. I have received. Some people are not saying, ask the person next to you, why are you not saying what we are saying? We are going to make a... And there will be consequences to what you are saying. So get ready. Can you, can you see that? Put your right hand on your chest. Say, my father, my father. My father. Beginning from today. Beginning from I have received. Put your right hand on. You are making a pledge. <laughs> if you are not sure, you can release it. And it will be obvious, we know you. So look around you. If the person doesn't put their... And if you are doing this, it's a serious statement. Heaven is taking cognizance of it. Say, my father, my father. My father. Beginning from today. In fact, stand to your feet so that I know those who are sitting. Stand to your feet. Say, my father, my father. Beginning from today, as I have received the power of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, now till end of the year, now till end of next year, now till end of the year after next year, as my days, this power to overcome sin to overcome iniquity to overcome transgression to overcome pornography to overcome fornication adultery lies unforgiveness unnecessary anger i receive power of life in christ jesus to overcome lord from today let that appetite of sin be cut off, be cut off, be cut off from today. If I ever sin, <laughs> shall to say from today, if I ever sin, not deliberately. You see, you like that one. You see your life, you are laughing. If I sin, not deliberately. Let me still receive power to get out of that situation. Say, Lord, you know my heart. I want to get it right. So therefore, for once in my life, let that sin that easily beset me disappear from my life forever, forever, forever. Sit down. If you pray that prayer sincerely, so shall it be in your life. That is eternal life. When you have this life, 
you live a life above sin, above iniquity, above transgression. You have the life. You have the life. Early stages in my ministry, I had some men of God who were talking to me. You can do this and you do this. You do this, you get that. You do all kinds. There was a guy that was telling me there was early days in ministry. There's a woman in um, London. If you sleep with her, elderly woman, you will prosper. You will blow so. You have everything you are looking for. This one did it. Can't you see? This one did it. Can't you see? I can't mention their names. He, he looks. Is he not just sleeping and you go away? <laughs> but I have the power and the spirit of Christ. I can't do this. Even that time, I was dating. I wasn't even married. And I was still thinking, is it right? Why won't I wait for God's own timing to bless my life? Do you know all these people that spoke to me about things like that? Today, I'm far better than them. In fact, they have disappeared. Because Satan doesn't give free gift to me. I'm telling you. I am, I am thankful. If you know the kinds of temptations we had to overcome. Why? Because we had the power of life. You can overcome any temptation. I'm telling you. If you truly have it. You know sometimes eh, when you are so much into God. Some people will think you are not normal. But you are normal. It's just that they don't have the power that is operating in you. You see when you have that power. It makes you look abnormal. Because the thing everybody. I remember in the university. After I finished preaching before the lecturer will come. And I said that some nice ladies will come. You're a nice boy. Why are you doing this to yourself? Can you imagine? Preaching is doing bad thing to myself. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey. I will preach. Instead of them congratulating my preaching. They say, don't do that. You are spoiling things. Eh, take it easy. What do you want? <laughs> it's tempting. Maybe I'll sit down because I'll sweat. By the time the lecturer is talking, I'm feeling sleepy. Because energy didn't let me hear preaching. But it's paid off. It's paid off. Sometimes you travel and you meet some of them. And it's because they know that you didn't start today. You have been like this forever. How? By the power of the spirit of life. It's possible. You can rise in holiness. You can be promoted in righteousness. Let your colleagues compromise. But tell yourself, I will not compromise. But my promotion will never be denied me. This man, may God tie your promotion to your consecration. I say, may God tie your rising to your holiness. See, I receive it. That is eternal life. Look at it. For the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus has made me free. So, you are supposed to be free. You are supposed to be free. When you didn't know God, there were things you were doing. Now you know God. How come you are still doing them? It means you are still not free. All your friends are unbelievers. You are not free. All your friends. And you keep telling us you are converting them. Yet not one has followed you to church. You are supposed to be free. Is that not what the Bible said? You are supposed to be free from sin. That means it's possible to live a life that is sinless. It's possible. Several times when I go on my knees to pray, I don't know the sins I'm confessing. I just say, Lord, forgive me. If there's anything I've done, forgive me. But the truth of the matter is, I don't have any known sin in my head. I don't remember going to God. You know, yesterday, I did blue film. One, two, three. I don't, I don't, I, because I took inspiration from Martin Luther King Jr. At 45 years, he knelt down. He said, sir, I don't know the sins to confess, but anyhow, forgive me. Ah. The guy lived a peaceful life. So there is a time you can actually go to God and say, Lord, forgive me, but the truth is I don't know what I've done. Is that not a beautiful life? Must you always have something to confess? Every day you are looking for immense worship so that something will move you. I have made you too small in my life. Oh, Lord. When we close, we come to you, man. The worship was powerful. It's powerful because it gave you the chance to confess your sins. Forgive me. 
two things. is out of God's love, out of God's goodness, out of But we also also country. So it's not every crying that is because God. We are thankful. Some of them they know what they have done. When I sit here like that, some people kneel down. I, I, it's like God is playing a video. Some me preacher me come around, so I still see it. So when I stand up and I say, the way the worship was about, I wish I won't preach. I wish I won't. The person is like, it's true, daddy. Let us let us worship. Because me my can make your mind tiano. But should it always be so? That kind of Christianity is boring. You are making nonsense of eternal life. It's eternal life. Any, you don't need a special day to be rapture ready. Every day you are ready. There is no for unforgiveness in my heart. There is no bitterness in my heart. There is no iniquity in my So any day. So some of you, you want, anytime we preach a message like, Jesus is coming. That day, it's like your spirituality don't come. Hey, now you are ready. You enter your house, Makabaya, Father, this week. It doesn't work like that. Every day you should be ready. Every day. Every day. Whether you are washing, whether you are in the office, if Christ decides to come, you are free. Anytime you hear a message that Christ is coming soon and your heart is, is shaking, it's like, hey, is he coming? It's as if you are, when you hear one heavy thunder, boom, boom, you go and look at people. <laughs> Once that text will be, oh, <laughs> okay. It's fear. It's enough fear. It's fear. For some reason, I've always seen in my spirit that, I don't know, but it keeps coming to me, Mr. Yance, that the day rapture takes place, perhaps I may be in the flight. Every time it comes to me, I'm not saying God told me, but it comes to my spirit. And I'm imagining in the air, the rapture takes place and I'm not ready. <laughs> And the pilot is gone. Because when rapture takes place, some people will be in the air. Now imagine why I was so down by chair on my own. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to Yesterday, my brother Kobe sent me. Kobe, was it yesterday? Or is he here? Kobe. Was it yesterday? He sent me some video, some write up on some things happening around the world. I said, when he was sending it, I was reading. I was reading. I said, These things, eh, it's like we are playing with our heart. But one of these days, we may work, we may wake up with a shock because there's a lot happening. Oh, yeah, and read GTV. The international news, Kakra. I had the one million dollar, they will be fear. And one year, and when you signs of the end time, who they read the air course? Countries are becoming one, countries are planning to attack, and all these things that are happening. Can't you see the world is in chaos? Can't you see the, the world is setting up a stage for the antichrist? Because everybody's looking for solution. So we don't have time. We don't have time. We are also a static as a year to be a 12 years. Is it when you're 40 or my? And you're ready. Yeah, they ever cause work and no crash. No, Sana, no, I've been so. No, I said, flood the bow. Almost all forget it. Flood the bow. Forget eventually the flood came. And the Bible said, just like the days of Noah, so shall it be in our days. And that's what is happening. So I'm begging. Don't let this message of eternal life leave your heart. Let it be a conscious reminder that you have the power of life and spirit of the Holy Ghost. And because of that, you are free from anything that can drag you to hellfire. When your husband travels as a wife, keep yourself well. When your wife travels as a husband, keep yourself well. Fortunately, now there is video call. When you miss each other, you can call her. Honey, I miss you. Share your emotions with each other. Express it. I miss you. I miss you. I wish you were next to me. Say all those things. When you finish, you hang up. 
Don't see it as an opportunity to bring another girlfriend. It's bad. It's bad. Though. One day I went to, a, I traveled out and I went to the hotel they put me in. Carita, immediately I lied on the bed. Something took me. So I came for out of the bed. And I said, what is this? Then I lied down. The thing took me again. Mommy, I don't know if I've told you this story. The thing took me again. Then I got up. I said, Lord, what is it? Then the Lord opened my eyes. If you saw what has been going on in that room, my spirit was not comfortable. So I called the reception. I said, can you change my room? He said, why? This is like the best room we have. That's what you are. I said, even if the one you are offering me is not the best room, at least I can have peace of mind to lie down. It's better. Why was I uncomfortable? Because the level of decadence in that room, eh? God showed me some Jamaican people that occupied the room before I came. You see, that's how to the extent my spirituality is and discernment. So I couldn't, if, listen, if they didn't have any mattress, I would have lied on the floor. Because for me to sleep and the thing would choke me to get out. They have, they have done whatever and they have gone. I'm the one going to suffer. Now, they said there is no available because that was like the nicest room. They, so they put me in another room. It was like, it, those of, there's the room called emergency room. That's for people who are not feeling well. I'm well, but I volunteered to enter that room. When I lied down, I was happy. I was getting good revelation. In that meeting, the power of God fell. I ministered to people, but they didn't know I was sleeping in an emergency room. When you enter the bathroom, it's for disabled people. That's how I brought this. They have special rooms. But I'm not disabled, but in this context, I like to be disabled. Yeah. There are other times too. I've gone to a hotel. When they put me in a room, then the Lord will tell me, do you know so so and so slept on this same bed? I said, really? I remember I went to a hotel like that and the place they checked me in, that was the same place. The man of the redeemed church pastor, that was the room he stayed. It's a good room. I swim in the anointing. I said, Lord, as I lie on this my Papa, the boy is grace. If not, all let a little touch my life. I was enjoying it. In the same way, I went to another room. It took me. I came out. Because if I'm not careful, I come back a different man. I'll be chasing small, small girls here and there because a Jamaican spirit has entered me. Thank God for Don't go there. <laughs> Do you know when the Holy Ghost is leading you? Eh, there are some environments you enter, you are just not comfortable. How many of you have been there before? You just go to some places, you are in a hurry to get out of the place. Mommy is my waiter. It's not every E3 I'm comfortable with. One day we were driving somewhere and we saw something. So we wanted to enter the place and go and eat. <laughs> when we entered the place, we looked at the environment, look at something. Obi and two years old. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, see, uncle. But there are some of us, we are comfortable everywhere. Everywhere. Look at her, look at where you are eating your gobe. Look at the environment. Buy it and take it away. Why must you sit there? It's not every place you should sit and be comfortable. Let the Holy Ghost in. Listen. Let the Holy Ghost lead you to good places. Lift up your two hands. I speak over your life. After this service, may you not enter wrong places. I say, may you not enter wrong places to contaminate your spirit. That's why it's not everybody you make your friend. Not everybody. Why? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, it separates you from wrong association. It separates you from wrong company. 
Remember a daughter or somebody gave a testimony of how there was a door. She, she believed that this was a door of opportunity she should enter. And then God said, no. I think I gave her away that that is not the door. There's a better door opening. That means sometimes the offer may be good, but it may not necessarily be God. Oh, yeah. A guy came to me, put euros, thousands of euros on my hotel table. Told me this hammer jeep is offering it in addition to the thousands of euros. I should just do a program for him. I said, what is the program about? He said, don't worry. I will scan some things for you. It will make the work easy. Then after all that I'm offering you, we will share the money. It's good opportunity for somebody. In fact, when I came back, a bishop in this country told me, you missed out on that opportunity. Because it's evil money, but when it touches your hand, it's sanctified money. <laughs> I remember, I didn't come by road. I came by air. And since so they playing, and I tell me, I was so sad. I said, so do you do this with people? He started calling names of men of God. I know. So all that glitters is no gold. Because the truth is, he answered, and you play I'm a frock or Amsterdam. This is playing tetoa. And he said, I'm a cock. Mumu Matra said, Daddy, they know Tonyami. No, but with him, the last day, no, they are called so. Baba King can tribute. He's magnanimous. He's meek. O preachy. But maybe I'm a channel. You have no idea. It's possible. You live good life, serve God, but that last moment. If somebody at the last moment can receive Christ and enter paradise with him, somebody too at the last moment can compromise and enter hellfire. Is that not what happened to the thief on the cross? He was never holy one day, but the last day of his life, he repented. He went into paradise. So it's not how you start, it's the way you are finishing. And unfortunately, many people are not finishing well. I'm telling you, the other day I had a pastor, I believed in saying the Holy Spirit is no longer a teacher. Is no longer a teacher. So if the Holy Ghost is not our teacher, what else is he? He said, we are your real teachers, not the Holy Spirit. And people were jumping. He me This is what poor revelation. Hi. Those people are the most fake people you can ever find. Hi. This is a deep. I didn't walk in deep. Relegating the Holy Spirit. When First John 1, 1 John 2, 27 says that when the anointing, which that same anointing shall teach you. So the Holy Spirit is a teacher. How be it, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you. So if he's not a teacher, who is he? People are jumping. Stand to your feet. Look at it. But the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit, which ye have received of him, abided in you. And ye need not, ye need not that any man teach you. But that same anointing, that's what? So is the Holy Spirit not a teacher? God, they didn't tell Noah to build the ark. There is no heaven. There is no hell. That's what they are preaching now. And these are respected men of God. Don't follow them. There is heaven. There is hellfire. Jesus himself. Hell is mentioned 13 times. Jesus mentioned it 11 times. If there was no hell, he would not mention it. So if anybody tells you there is no heaven, there is no hell, they are deceiving you. Is someone fully at all? We are in the last days. The Bible said, if it were possible, the very elect, like Kingsley, eh? the very elect, like Reverend Istu, the very elect, like Dr. Mensa Otabo, can be deceived. That's the truth. If it were possible, that means if you allow yourself, you start preaching heresies. And that's what we are seeing. And people are calling it deep. People are calling it deep. It's always the cash. <laughs> you know, those people, they like cash. <laughs> you know those people? <laughs> Lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning, I receive the spirit of Christ. I receive the power of life and the spirit 
of Christ. From today, by this power, let my nostalgia for sin be quenched. In the name of Jesus, eternal life has come. Shout it, eternal life has come. Therefore, I am forever separated from sin and death. I am not going back. I am pressing forward. Say, Lord, help me that in these last days, I will not backslide. Surround me with good people. Surround me with good association. Lord, whatever I condoned before, that was a compromise that put my relationship with you in a strain. Today, I ask that you will tamper justice with mercy. In the name of Jesus, from today, I activate the eternal life I have received so that I will make you proud. I will fulfill destiny and purpose in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, come on, clap your hands.